Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Chin Up Show. This is episode 19, and uh, it's a special edition because, as you can see, we are recording from a different venue. Uh, usually, it's at the Legacy Kota Kamuning, uh, where we also have X Kota Kamuning uh, every Sunday. But today, uh, we decided to come to a school, uh, our very own school, Victory Academy. And uh, the reason is because I was invited to speak at their chapel. And you know, the school is about almost 10 years old, and uh, I've been around <laughs> for that long time, uh, being you know, known as the founder of Victory Academy by the grace of God. Uh, but I've never, ever done a chapel. Uh, not to say they haven't invited me, they've invited me probably a dozen times, uh, but uh, the time and the dates always clash with something else uh, I had committed to. So uh, this time round, you know, fully committed to Victory Academy this year, especially, uh, especially with my time, uh, I said yes uh, to Pastor Daniel, uh, who started on the topic of purpose last uh, Thursday, uh, oh, last Wednesday, uh, and uh, he said to me, Pastor Kenneth, uh, you're on next week, and uh, we would like you, if you don't mind, to continue on the topic of purpose, which I did, and uh, so this morning uh, we came in. Uh, the team set up this, uh, you know, makeshift but really quite good-looking uh, stage uh, and, um, and set. Uh, and I, I'm so thankful uh, to the team that worked so hard uh, to put Chin Up uh, show together. Uh, and so what we did was uh, we recorded with the students uh, here uh, in our midst. And uh, I, I did two segments with them. So uh, this is segment one. Uh, and we're sort of uh, doing a, a reverse uh, kind of recording. Uh, I did segment two and segment three first. So segment two uh, was, uh, again, just continuing on the whole topic of understanding youth and revisioning youth ministry. Uh, and so I gave four points in segment two. And uh, let me just see if I can remember the four points. Well, you get to watch it after this. But uh, the four points are example, environment, encouragement, and empowerment. Uh, and I really believe in those four points uh, if you want to do well in youth ministry. But I thought that it would be nice to even hear from the young people themselves. So uh, the secondary school uh, of Victory Academy, uh, that's who I spent time uh, doing this recording with uh, this morning. And uh, I asked for them to lift up their hand uh, and stand up and uh, comment on what I had to say. Uh, of course, they were quite shy at the beginning. Uh, and so I had to call some names uh, I don't know all their names, uh, I must confess, but I know maybe about half to two-thirds. And uh, so they were very, very kind to me. Uh, they smiled, of course. Some were nervous. Uh, I was a little bit nervous too, you know, although this is the 19th episode uh, and we've done 18 so far and I think uh, we're getting a little bit better each time. But I was nervous because it's the first time, first kind uh, of set like this uh, and, uh, you know, sitting in front of all these uh, very smart students, uh, I think all of us were nervous. Uh, but they gave very, very good answers, and I think you're going to enjoy it when you watch segment two. And segment three, uh, I decided to honour uh, the topic on purpose, and that's uh, what uh, we did exactly. So I put up some slides, and I had about maybe uh, close to 10 slides. Uh, but because um, you know, I went into greater detail, on some of the slides, so I think we stopped at slide five, uh, I think maximum six. Uh, but you get to watch that as well. Uh, that is segment three, uh, the last segment of episode number 19. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll have another chance to speak uh, to the secondary school and uh, finish off uh, the last few slides, which are also very important. But you know, a highlight for today is that I also had to go uh, to the primary school. <laughs> the primary school is really, really very cute because they are from ages uh, maybe 7 all the way uh, to 12. And uh, uh, Pastor Jack uh, told me, uh, well, he asked me first. He said, Pastor Kenneth, how long are you going to do uh, this uh, chapel uh, message for? And, you know, I was already thinking of doing a shorter time because, you know, the attention span of the younger ones uh, and also the understanding uh, of some of these concepts uh, that the older ones would understand, the younger ones would find it hard uh, to uh, catch. Uh, so I decided maybe I'll go 40 minutes, right? Uh, 
uh, Pastor Jack said, um, usually we do 30 minutes, you know. And then he smiled at me and said, uh, if you want to do 20 minutes, it's okay. <laughs> I got the hint, Jack. I got the hint. Uh, and uh, I'm guessing, you know, uh, that uh, they would be bored, right? By 30 minutes, by 40 minutes. And so I decided to put my game on. Uh, you know, I've been working with young people now for 35 years. And so I just want to see whether I still have it, right? Especially with the younger ones. And so, yeah, I just thought I'll go crazy. And uh, finish in 20 minutes, but they got the point. The students could actually repeat back to me when I was asking them, you know, like for example, uh, I use an instrument, right? And, and you know, the Bible speaks about how an instrument will have a distinct sound. And if the instrument doesn't play that sound, you know, for example, the trumpet, uh, how will people know how to go to war? And so uh, I use that because I saw them playing instruments, a uh, shaker and uh, I don't know what you call it, clapper uh, and, uh, and a xylophone. Uh, so uh, every instrument there has a purpose. And of course, uh, I joked with them, right? I, I took the, the stick uh, that you used to play the xylophone and I started to scratch my back. And they all laughed and I said, well, it's working, you know. And you know... Uh, uh, at the end, they, they caught, yeah, it's working, but it's not the purpose. And I took the clapper, the little cute clapper, and I went, ta 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 and, uh, and, you know, it's supposed to make a kind of music, right? So then I went and went to a few of their heads, and I started cutting their hair. So I started cutting their hair, and they laughed, and they squirmed. Uh, and I said, why, why are you laughing, you know? Uh, I can cut your hair with this, right? And then, of course, I, I did a gross thing about, you know, taking one of my armpit hair out with the, you know, clapper. And they all went, uh, and I said, well, I can, right? I can do this, right? I, uh, so, you got to understand that when you're talking about purpose, you can. You can use this pen to scratch your back. You can use this pen to try to scratch your ear. But that was not its purpose. And there are too many people going around uh, saying that I can, right? I can sleep around. I can uh, use my hand, right? This hand. Uh, this hand is supposed to pray for people. This hand is supposed to shake hands. This hand is supposed to minister. This hand is supposed to bless. But we can use the same hand to fight and to punch and to slap. And so, yes, we can, but is it meant for that? And there are many young people who go around, even adults, who, yeah, you know, the way we use our time, the way we use our money, we can, you know. We can go for a Taylor Swift uh, concert, uh, followed by another concert, for, and you can spend all your money, you can. Uh, but is that what your money is for? <laughs> for attending all the concerts in Singapore? Or is it to maybe give to the anniversary gift, right? Uh, and uh, yes, I know I can scratch my back with this pen, but this pen is best used uh, to sign big checks. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so uh, I had so much fun. The kids were laughing and uh, the teachers later on came up to me and said, we really enjoyed that too. Uh, and uh, Pastor Jack was funny. He said, Pastor Kenneth, even if they didn't get the message, uh, it was a good laugh. Uh, and sometimes uh, students need a good laugh. All right, so uh, that was that. Uh, and uh, what a wonderful uh, half Wednesday uh, to have spent uh, doing wonderful things uh, with young people. Okay, as usual, the first segment is uh, updates. Uh, and uh, I want to give you a few now, uh, things that are important to me. Uh, I went to visit Pastor Daniel Chong's dad, uh, who I think at this point in time, He's uh, stage 3 colon cancer. Uh, but when I went to visit him that day, he was in high spirits. Uh, Daniel said he was very, very appreciative of the uh, visit. And uh, he couldn't walk, actually, the two days before I came. And uh, he had um, cracks under the, well, the sole of his feet, under his feet. And, 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 and so, it was very hard to walk. Uh, and so, you know, his hands, his hands, uh, dry skin, peeling. Uh, and uh, the chemotherapy was doing that to him. Uh, and uh, he had uh, other pains and aches and discomfort. Uh, but on that day, he was able to stand, walk, eat, um, and talk to me uh, in a very jovial way. Uh, I think that's what encouragement does. And remember, encouragement is not best when people are up. Encouragement is best when people are down. 
And so we encourage them, we give them courage. That's what encouragement is. You give them courage. So we can give courage to each other, right? With words, uh, with uh, care. And so it was my privilege, really, my honour uh, to go. Uh, not just because he was Pastor Daniel's dad. I mean, that's bonus. But um, because, you know, he's a fellow human being and he's a Christian. And he doesn't come to our church, but that's, that's okay, you know. Um, Jesus loves him. Jesus loves Daniel's mom, who was also needing prayer. And so uh, just being there, having a good chat uh, for about, I think, 45 minutes, just chatting, finding out how he was, finding out what kind of medication he was taking, etc. Um, and then praying. And after we prayed, uh, Daniel's dad said to me that he felt heat coming through his body. And I could see that his hand was uh, shaking when I was praying for him. So we thank God for God's power. God's power is readily available. And I think it's Matthew 10, verse 8 that says, Freely you have received. Freely give. And uh, that's what we do. So that's a highlight for me. Uh, then uh, there was Lynette's AGM. Lynette's uh, stands for uh, Life Inspired Network Society. Uh, and um, Lynette's uh, is all about uh, mental health and suicide prevention. And so we had our sixth AGM, uh, AGM number six. Uh, and uh, quite a few of the, us were there. I think only three people had to miss it. Uh, but it was a really, really good time. Uh, Jill, Dr. Jill, who facilitates that meeting, uh, kept saying, you know, we, 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 we had dinner together. So thank you, Lynette, uh, for uh, feeding us that night. Uh, but we had a quick dinner and then, you know, uh, we wanted to finish by 8.30. But I think we finished closer to 9.30 because there was so much to talk about. Uh, so many wonderful testimonies of lives having been touched uh, by and through Lynette's. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, uh, young people uh, uh, blessed uh, by what we had to offer in schools. Uh, and then, of course, the big one uh, was a discussion. I think we discussed this for about 45 minutes. Um, the whole matter about uh, applying for a government grant. Now, AYA and X Church has never applied for a government grant. Uh, we thought about it through the last 28 years, 29 years. Uh, and one time I even met with the uh, um, youth and sports minister, uh, Ong Tiket, I think, YB Ong Tiket, I think uh, that, that was uh, his name. And uh, he was so favourable uh, that he actually wrote a personal letter uh, to help us uh, become a tax-exempted um, organization. And that helps a lot because when you're tax-exempt, uh, people want to give to you because they can then uh, also claim tax exemption for the gift that they've given to the organization. Uh, and uh, the one criteria that I wasn't comfortable with, or not just not comfortable with, but I, I couldn't afford to do it, was that at that time, 70%, 70, 70, 70 of the donations that come in or came in uh, would have to go to the work itself, as in, you know, field work, young people, etc. And um, there was not very many donations coming in uh, to start with. So let's just say, for example, if I needed uh, 10,000 ringgit uh, to pay for rental of office, pay for uh, two staff, uh, pay for electricity, uh, all that. Uh, and 20,000 ringgit came in. Now, I would have to spend 70,000, 70 percent, right? So actually, if 20,000 ringgit came in as a donation, I would have to spend 10,000 on what I just mentioned. Uh, and that would mean it's only 50 percent. And I would have run foul of the law. Uh, but, you know, I only received about 20,000. And so, and sometimes even less, sometimes 15,000. And so there was no way 70% could go just to the field work, uh, if you know what I'm trying to say. So I, I just knew that I would run foul uh, of the law uh, and uh, break uh, that condition. And so I said, you know, of, of course, if one million ringgit was coming in to, to, to donation, 70% um, is 700,000 ringgit going to the field. That's okay because I still have 300,000 ringgit left to pay for salaries, and, 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 uh, and uh, rental, etc. So a very, very good letter came out. 
uh, from the youth and sports minister at that time uh, and uh, it went to the tax department. The tax department wrote to me and said that we have the endorsement of uh, the youth and sports minister and we would like to consider your case but I couldn't uh, proceed with it uh, because, you know. So I just want to say to you that we've tried once or twice uh, but it didn't work for us and so through the years, uh, it's just been the Lord's grace and goodness. It's been His provision. It's been Him. The Lord, Jesus Christ, uh, who has been providing for AYA and X Church. Miraculously, month after month, we get to pay all our bills. And then, of course, the church, X Church came uh, to birth. And then we grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And X Church uh, started to become our main funder uh, for all that we do. Now, it's not very much left over. Uh, sometimes just a couple of thousands left over every month. Uh, now and then, you know, maybe ten to 20,000 ringgit. Uh, left over, but a lot of hundreds of thousands of ringgit go out uh, to uh, make this ministry work and to be a blessing to many people. So when Lynette's uh, now is being offered uh, to write in to the government for a government grant, I thought, yeah, I think this is the time because there are just many schools, too many schools uh, to uh, deal with. Uh, if they all invited Lynette's to go and have that uh, talk on suicide prevention and mental health. Uh, I think we would need more staff. I think we would need definitely more resources. Uh, so um, I'm hoping uh, that uh, Dr. Jill and together with the team will be able to not only write a very good proposal, but on the day that we get to go and uh, pitch uh, to uh, the government agency, uh, that we will receive much favour. And uh, they said that the first uh, application uh, the amount that the maximum amount that they can give us is half a million. Maximum maximum amount amount for the first um, first application is half a million, and then if they see that you're doing very very well, uh, you're making a real difference, and uh, putting Malaysia on the map as it were, uh, you know they might go up to a million, one point five million, two million. Uh, I, I'm not so big on the amount. I, I just want the government to know who we are, what we're doing, because with or without their help, we, we're still going to go on. We're still going to do it because God called us to do it and I'm sure God will provide. Uh, but this is a very exciting uh, chapter. Uh, we're going to try to apply for this government grant and uh, pray, please pray for uh, the officers of Lynette's uh, and um, we will do our best uh, to uh, get this done as quickly as possible. Now, the next uh, thing I want to tell you about, which is really, really exciting, last Saturday we had pray. The way we spell pray is P-R-4, Y. Four, looking like an A. P-R-4, Y stands for prayer rally four times a year. And I just felt like, you know, I don't need uh, our whole church to keep coming back every month once because that sometimes uh, can be quite burdensome. People have different reasons and excuses why they can't come. So I thought just four times a year, okay, not burdensome at all, four times a year, usually on a Saturday, okay, not too hard, uh, traffic is easier. Uh, why don't the whole church come and let's just seek the Lord together, pray, praise, worship the Lord and even uh, prophesy and share the word and, you know, open the altar. And last Saturday was another winning pray. Uh, we had our first pray, uh, I think, on the 1st of January this year and just last Saturday, the second one. And I think uh, as many people as the first time uh, came for the second one, maybe I think give and take about 40 to 50 uh, difference in number, but still a packed crowd and uh, the Lord moved. Now, I must tell you very honestly, I, I wasn't fully prepared like I was on the first pray because I thought the first pray I launched it, right? Uh, and as a pastor, as a leader, as the one who the Lord uh, gave pray as an idea to, I thought, you know, I should just, you know, uh, lead the way and uh, show how it could be done. Uh, and the second pray, I thought that, the, you know, the prayer uh, board would have, you know, put names down and people to share the word, people to do this and that. And I realized only when my wife, uh, who was uh, getting ready just after worship, worship was amazing, Okay, uh, we had a great team leading uh, worship and we were so, so, so blessed. Uh, Pastor Stephen, who's also uh, producing uh, today, uh, he uh, is um, 
he, he was uh, one of the main uh, worship leaders. Pastor Daniel was on keyboard. It was a full and good team. And uh, as worship was about to uh, end, uh, at least the first session, my wife turned to me and said, uh, so do you have anything? <laughs> and uh, I, I thought maybe she's just asking because, you know, that's out of respect. Usually my leaders will ask me before they go up. Even if they had a plan, they will still ask me. But then when I said, I shook my head because, you know, I don't like to always be the one on stage. I like to give my leaders, you know, always the opportunity uh, to also, you know, rise uh, to the occasion and, uh, and do what they need to do. And so, I, again, I thought the prayer uh, uh, board had, you know, put the whole agenda down. And then after my wife asked me about, you know, do you have anything? I said, no. I said, no, because, you know, I thought, yeah, let's just carry on with whatever you have. Uh, then I saw her begin to flip the Bible, left, right, left, right, left, right. And after about two minutes of doing this, I felt like, okay, okay, uh, maybe there is no one on the agenda to go up there and share a word or even to give a prophecy. And uh, my wife had already been up to here with work the whole of the week before that. And uh, she actually told me, uh, Kenneth, I am chairing uh, today for pray because, uh, you know, others uh, couldn't make it. And one particular person that was asked said, you know, maybe not today. And so my wife had to rise up to the occasion again. And I thought to myself, wow, she was so busy. She's a little bit tired. Uh, you know, I drive her in the car and she just falls asleep uh, within, you know, two minutes because the eyes are just so uh, heavy. Uh, and uh, so when I saw her doing that, I said, oh, no, I'm not going to add another burden to her. So I said, Lord, and God had already put something on my heart anyway. So I said, okay. So I, I took the microphone, went up. And uh, beautifully, the Lord just uh, gave a word in season and I was able to prophesy and open the altar. And man, oh, hallelujah, God really moved again. And we praise Him, give Him all the glory. Uh, people receive a touch from God and there were many testimonies after that. And so, all glory to God. And of course, pray also um, coincided uh, with our launch for u -turn. And those of you who don't know what u is, is our 21 days of prayer and fast. We have it every year. Uh, and so uh, we started uh, praying on the 9th of March. And uh, the day we close, the 21 days of prayer and fast will be uh, Good Friday. Good Friday. And we want to come together uh, as a church and share our testimonies of how the Lord uh, has and had answered our prayers. Okay, so uh, that uh, was pray and the launch of U-Turn. And I pray that those of you who are still fasting and praying, uh, that you are having a real God time. And that the Lord is showing you things and revealing you, uh, you know, His uh, truths, His word, His ways. Uh, and that you are even learning and discovering yourself a little bit more. And uh, I pray that all of you are enjoying your time uh, seeking the Lord. All right? Uh, right after pray, I rushed to the other side uh, of this uh, floor to my office at Base Camp. We call our office Base Camp uh, because this whole mall is called the Summit. And so every summit has to have a Base Camp. And so uh, our office, uh, I, I, I ran to, uh, sort of ran, I, I walked very quickly uh, to the office because uh, by 1 p.m., uh, we had our very first full on creative communications core team meeting. Creative communications core team meeting, CCCT uh, for short. And um, it was a really, really good time. Uh, there in that place, in that meeting, uh, we talked about how we want to take a creative, uh, our creative arm, our creative ministry to another level. And this includes XTV. This includes uh, Express, which looks into social media. Uh, this uh, looks into, uh, what else? Exposure, you know, our camera photography work. Design, marketing. Okay, so at least uh, about five uh, different groups were represented. Uh, we really uh, talked about how we could go deeper, higher, further, wider, how we could really use our skill and talents to uh, truly be influencers. Uh, and uh, to help people uh, know what's going on, see what's going on, 
uh, and be encouraged by what's going on and be drawn uh, to want to uh, be to the, to the next event, uh, be at the next event, I should say, be at the next uh, prayer. Um, and uh, so, you know, you know what, that, what uh, our creative arm does is that it, it does that. It, it influences people's hearts and minds, if not, at least encourages them uh, to participate, to, to be a part of and to contribute to what God is doing here uh, in Acts Church. Uh, and uh, we mentioned a few things like uh, uh, alignment and approval uh, and accountability. There were five A's uh, that we talked about. And so it was really, really good uh, that uh, we were all on the same page that day. Okay, so uh, I was on Sunday in Nilai. Uh, I haven't spoken in Nilai for almost a year. They reminded me. So I turned around to uh, Yen Yi. I said, Yen Yi, when was the last time I came? And uh, Yen Yi said, Pastor, it was March the 19th. Wow, can give me date some more, you know. March the 19th, and she laughed. She said, Pastor, the, <laughs> the only reason why I remember was because it was the same day or the same weekend where we had uh, some kind of a youth out thing or a youth overnighter. And so, March 19th. And I was there March the 10th, right, last Sunday. So, uh, nine days short of one year. So, at least I can say, it's not been a year. <laughs> no, it's been close to a year. Uh, but on that day, the Lord led me not to carry on with my uh, scheduled, prepared message because during worship, the Lord spoke to me and said, I have a word of prophecy for uh, Acts Nilai. And so I spent the next 45 minutes to an hour delivering that prophecy, that word of prophecy. It had to do with Joseph and Joseph's life uh, and how Joseph went from being a pet of his father into the pit and the prison and then to the palace and the Prime Minister, uh, and he fulfilled his purpose. And so I spoke that to Ex Nilai, and it was really, really good. Uh, I enjoyed my time very much uh, at Ex Nilai. But at the end, after lunch, uh, we also went to visit a potential new venue. And uh, they wanted my opinion, they wanted uh, my sense of what could be. And so I saw a lot of potential. And uh, the management of that new venue was very, very favourable to us. So we praise God for that. And um, yeah, who knows? Uh, Acts Nilai may have a new venue within the next month or two. So God is doing wonderful things in Acts Church. Quite a few of our churches are actually, actually looking at new venues also. Uh, and I believe that uh, God is in the business of just multiplying us, uh, uh, widening uh, our influence uh, uh, and uh, growing our churches. Uh, we give God all the glory. I've just got uh, maybe one or two more things to say to you and then I'll close this segment. Now, uh, yesterday, Tuesday, uh, I was early. Uh, every Tuesday, I try to wake up by 4.15 in the morning. I do my quiet time for about an hour, an hour, five minutes. And then I go and take my uh, shower, get ready. And by 6 a.m., actually yesterday was 5.55 a.m., I start driving out of the, of the house because I want to get here early. Uh, my wife comes along with me, so we go to base camp first, open base camp by 6.10 in the morning. And then uh, I'm walking here by 6.15, 6.20. Uh, we open uh, Victory Academy uh, by 6.20, 6.25. Uh, and uh, then we prepare for uh, the uh, teacher's breakfast. Um, we call the teachers of Victory Academy overcomers. So we have overcomers breakfast and then devotion. And my wife did devotion uh, with, uh, with them yesterday. Uh, and now you probably know why I'm quite sleepy already by 8, 9 o'clock at night because it's been a long day, uh, but it was good. It was good that uh, the f it was a full day. It was a good day yesterday. Uh, and uh, we also had AYA staff devotion, and it was beautiful. Uh, then the hour of prayer was also very, very powerful. Uh, and uh, we thank God for the testimonies that have come in and also the many prayer uh, items that was given to us uh, to give our prayer support to. And uh, then... Uh, Towards the latter part of the day, we had the VA, Victory Academy, Principal's Office meeting. I am currently the head of the Principal's Office. I'm not the Principal, just the head of the Principal's Office, uh, giving direction and vision and, uh, and uh, support. And so, we met from 3.45, um, thereabouts, in the afternoon, all the way up to about 5.35. Uh, I was looking at my time because I wanted uh, not to take an, an 
uh, no, not even an extra minute uh, because uh, you know it was it was the traffic was really heavy outside. How many of you know that in Malaysia, uh, puasa has started, so traffic can be really crazy, quite unpredictable or predictably unpredictable. Uh, and uh, so I, I didn't want to hold back anyone. But the reason why we went so long is because yesterday was a very, very exciting uh, meeting we had at the principal's office. We talked about alumni. Yeah, alumni is very, very exciting. And so we were, we were talking about uh, who should be alumni, uh, should it just be any student that, just, that came and then left, uh, or should it be the graduates. We talked about how do we contact the alumni. We talked about how, do we put the alumni on uh, WhatsApp or Telegram. Uh, and uh, then we talked about student leadership. Uh, and uh, now we have got clubs where we have presidents and vice presidents and uh, secretary and treasurer. So this year, student lead leadership in uh, Victory Academy will go up to another level. But we also ask about how about uh, prefects and how about monitors and how about, you know, uh, just student leaders that help with assembly, for example. So student leaders will come up to the stage instead of Pastor Jack to be a student leader leading in Negaraku, leading in uh, Rukun Negara, uh, leading in uh, the Lord's Prayer. And so uh, we took a good half an hour, I think, just to talk about student leadership and how we, at the end of the day, want to come up with certificates for them and to write, you know, some of those school leavers' uh, documents so that when they go for uh, their uh, interviews uh, at universities, they'll be able to get, uh, you know, uh, some sort of uh, paper document uh, uh, to support uh, what they have done in school. We also talk about sports day and that's a big one, okay. Uh, we are going to go to a place uh, that is really, really nice uh, and uh, sports day is going to be different. We talked about the trophies and the medals and what we're going to do. Uh, all the medals and all the trophies will be given out this year at the sports day itself. So we're going to have pauses at the sports day uh, and we're going to give uh, those trophies and medals out. So it won't be another day that we'll do it. It will be at Sports Day itself. And so I encourage all of you who are part of uh, Victory Academy uh, to, uh, you know, really save the date. I think it's April the 20th. April the 20th is Sports Day for Victory Academy. Come join us. Come support us. Come have fun. And of course, uh, the last thing uh, we talked about at uh, the principal's office was this big move that we are planning for from DVCC uh, to the bridge and to the other side, the peak uh, and uh, the, uh, the base camp. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, we are going to uh, release uh, DVCC that we have used for almost 10 years now. And uh, I think it's at the end of May that we're going to say goodbye to this uh, chapter and this season. Uh, it's mixed feelings. Uh, we're happy and sad at the same time, but uh, mostly happy because we believe that God is leading us uh, to a, a new season and a new place and a new uh, new testimonies, alright? So pray with us and uh, get ready to help us uh, to uh, yeah, to, to be part of this big move. Alright, so I think that's all uh, really I have in store. Uh, I want to say again a big thank you uh, to the management and the teachers of uh, Victory Academy for allowing us to change their schedule a little bit today, rearrange their chairs, uh, you know, take over their stage uh, and all that. Uh, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to all the students for participating. Uh, right after I say bye to you uh, for segment one, uh, of course, you'll get to watch segment two. I don't want you to miss it. It's good stuff. And also segment three uh, to close episode 19. So this is Kenneth Chin uh, thanking you for tuning in. Uh, and uh, if you could, please click subscribe, give us a like and leave us a comment. The Lord bless you. Take care. Hello and uh, welcome back to the Chin Up Show. This is segment two. Uh, and I am shooting live with my team here at Victory Academy. Victory Academy, hello! All right, so this is history making uh, to me and for me and for the team uh, because usually you see us recording at Legacy uh, there in uh, Kota Kamuning. Uh, but here today, uh, we are doing this very, for the very first time. Not only first time in Victory Academy, but first time in any school. 
So history making indeed. And uh, you know, those of you who've been uh, watching uh, for the past 18 episodes now, this is episode 19 by the way, uh, you know that for the past four episodes, I've been talking about reaching young people. Uh, the title is Understanding Youth and Revisioning Youth Ministry. And so uh, last four, uh, I think it was last three, maybe this is the fourth episode uh, for youth ministry, uh, we have been on this whole uh, thought about how to and why and when and all that kind of thoughts about helping uh, the adults, helping youth ministers, helping youth pastors, helping pastors, uh, not only here in KL, but uh, around Malaysia and, and the world. Uh, those of you who are watching, uh, we love young people and we want to be able to reach them effectively. And so uh, I want to just continue uh, with segment two of episode 19 uh, with four points that I would like all of you who are watching uh, to know. This is just from experience. Uh, this is from uh, you know uh, the 35 years that God has uh, called me to uh, be involved with young people. Uh, and uh, today, uh, I'm so glad to be able to be in front of the young people uh, and uh, have them join us. Now, at segment three, uh, I am going to be speaking about purpose, which is the topic given to me by Victory Academy for their chapel. In fact, this is chapel time. This is chapel time. For those of you who are watching, uh, who by now are thinking this is a cool school to be at, why don't you sign up? Uh, okay, this is the site site advertisement. And what do you, what do the uh, students here think about that? All right, okay, they are clapping. Uh, so uh, the students and I and the teachers here invite you, uh, those of you who are parents and uh, especially in KL, uh, Selangor, Subang Jaya, especially Puchong, maybe, huh? Got the commuting is not too far as well. Uh, and you're watching this and you're thinking, huh? I wonder, uh, you know, uh, the best school. Uh, I'm doing this as scratching my head, but I don't want to scratch my head because I just comb my hair. Uh, and uh, so uh, you're thinking, uh, you know, uh, I want to send them to a good Christian uh, based school. Uh, so think no more. Come uh, look for us, Victory Academy. We are here. Uh, at uh, Summit uh, Mall, okay? Uh, maybe, maybe uh, my producer will put on a, a, a link uh, to... Uh, uh, we, we will probably say a thank you to uh, Victor Academy. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure whether there are any credits now, but uh, a thank you uh, to Victor Academy for allowing us to do this today and then a link uh, so that those of you who are watching can link to us and consider uh, coming uh, to check us out. All right. So these are the four points that I gave uh, to these... Uh, huge group of pastors and leaders around Asia. Uh, and uh, the video has been uh, you know, uh, recorded and uh, it's probably not yet edited. Uh, but uh, if this is a good edit, no, maybe we'll uh, put that into that video. I'm not sure. But that was only for 20 minutes and it will be uh, broadcasted to all these pastors only in April. So we recorded it early. Okay, the four points that I was trying to tell uh, leaders and pastors about how to reach young people uh, just through the, the experience that God has given me, is point number one. And I, wanna, I want to see whether the students here also would like to respond to it and give your ideas uh, uh, behind it. Uh, but point number one is example. So I'm telling uh, leaders, I'm, I'm telling pastors, that if you really want to reach young people, you've got to be an example. And uh, the side uh, explanation of that is that we've got to build a ministry that says to the young people, I see you. I see you. Uh, and uh, many times uh, we fail in our youth ministry is because we're building uh, a ministry that is, uh, you know, that is very much what the adults want or what the adults think youth want. And uh, I, I think it's very, very important. And of course, we don't do everything that is uh, young. We don't do everything that, you know, uh, is, uh, uh, that, that looks like uh, we are so into young people that we forget ourselves. Uh, but we must at least do enough to tell the young person who comes into the place that I see you, uh, that I'm not blinded to you. Uh, uh, it could be the way I smile at you, the way I high-five you, simple things like that. The way I uh, uh, say hi to you, maybe even get a chance to hug you uh, and to show you love. Uh, and uh, maybe it's in the form of my music, maybe it's the form of my preaching, uh, maybe it's in the form of my connection with you. Uh, someone said to me uh, many years ago uh, that, uh, Pastor Kenneth, I think that you connect with young people quite well. Uh, and uh, I, I think all of us can as long as we care for young people. Uh, we don't have to go to a young people's school or a youth ministry 
uh, Bible school. We don't have to. We just have to. It comes out of a heart of really wanting the young person uh, to do well. And uh, if you really love and care for the young person, it will show. So, uh, I tell the pastors, uh, whatever you do, you might not even have a big budget to put on big sound, big uh, instruments, but young people will know that you see them uh, just by your example. All right. So, I'm going to right now, uh, don't just hear it from me, uh, I'm going to right now ask if there be any young person here that would like to re respond to the first point. What do you think about that? And, 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 and when you come into a school like this or into a youth ministry or into a church, how do you feel that the leaders there see you? Can I get uh, someone here to respond? How do you feel? So, so when you come in, like for, for example, to X Church even on Sunday, how do you think? Uh, is there someone here from X Gothic Community? All right. Ma Marcus, right? Marcus. Marcus. Stand up, Marcus, if you don't mind, so that the camera can get a good shot at you. Uh, Marcus, uh, you, you, you're in Kota Kabuning. I want to start there because I think X Kota Kabuning is really youth friendly. I think. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Hey, hallelujah. All right. Woo. All right. This, this, uh, this, this uh, show goes around the world. So I want to make sure that I got the first point right. Okay. Tell me why you keep coming. You keep coming. Yeah. Uh, and this Sunday is not a youth service, and yet it's a youth friendly service. Uh, so tell us in your own words. Uh, my first thing is example. I see you. Uh, tell us whether you think we in ex Gothic Morning see you. Uh, yes, I think I feel uh, welcome every time I go oh, that's there. Good. Yeah. That's good. And, and how, 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 do you, how do they make you feel welcome? Uh, for example, like what you said, like basic things like high fives and like have a little talk. It actually helps right. to make right. you feel like engaged with one another. Yeah. So, so it's not like you have to have a big budget, right, Marcus? Yeah. Uh, you know, not, you know, we're not talking about big sound, big lights, uh, that everybody have turned off the lights to make it dark for a young person to walk in, which I know quite a few churches now do. They make the whole place dark because they think that the young people are drawn to darkness. Uh, so, uh, so, but we, are, we have all our lights on. Uh, so so it's, not, it's not about all these things. I think, I think we think that young people need this, but actually, young people just need what you just said. Yeah. Uh, just some high five. Some I, I notice you. I come and say hi to you. I maybe ask you how's your your day or how was your week. And there's some talk going on. There's some communication. We we break the barrier and we connect. Right? Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add to that? I see you. Yeah, and I also think that like now most young people are like quite shy, mm. so they don't really go to you and say like. Right. Hi, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So I think reaching out to them and say hi is a good idea. That's so good. That that advice just went around the world, and you have just helped uh, you know adults out there go like, oh, I thought I needed a million ringgit budget, uh, but this young man is telling me himself that the young people are shy, and so sometimes it's hard for you to actually go up and start a conversation. So the adults actually uh, take that uh, role of stepping out and uh, reaching out. That's good. Thank you, Marcus. Okay. Appreciate it. Now, I also said uh, to uh, the leaders, uh, the adults, that there is a ministry that Jesus modeled out called the incarnation ministry. And I explained that to you. It's not reincarnation. Huh? It's not you alive and then you die and then you get into somebody's body. It's not reincarnation. It's incarnation meaning that Jesus as God came into the body of a human being. So he incarnated. So if you want to do youth ministry well, you've got to come down to their level. You've got to come into their world. Jesus left heaven, so beautiful, so amazing heaven must be, and earth will look like trash. Earth will be smelling so bad compared to heaven. And yet Jesus, because he loves us, he came to us. And so if any adult want to reach young people, go to them. Uh, uh, and, and be like Jesus, have an incarnation ministry uh, and don't just, oh, you know, that young person didn't say hello to me. And sometimes the adults, you know, I know the older adults don't like when young people don't say hello, auntie, hello, uncle. And I know uh, young people should learn to do that, but sometimes, as Marcus said, they're shy or they don't know what to do uh, or they think that the adult is too busy for them. Uh, so I see you. Example uh, number one, I see you. Is there anyone else who would like to contribute to this thought? Anyone else? I see you. How about, how about uh, Victory Academy? Uh, you're still here. 
uh, and I can, I just uh, was part of your assembly, uh, and uh, I can hear that uh, Pastor Jack is telling us that plans moving forward is that students will do uh, leading in Nagaraku or leading in the Rukun Nagara uh, and the Lord's Prayer. And so we want to involve uh, young people a little, more, a little bit more. So I guess that's also one version of I see you and uh, I want you uh, to know that uh, I have plans for you. All right, let's move into point two now. Uh, what I told the adults and all these pastors in Asia is that we must provide young people the environment, the right environment. It's like a plant. Uh, when the plant has the right environment, okay, sun, water, uh, and uh, you know the, the air around it, uh, the oxygen or the, even the carbon dioxide that helps uh, with making food for the plant, the environment is very important. Uh, and also when you put a plant into a pot, uh, sometimes the plant can only grow so big. And when you take that same plant and you take it out of the pot and put it into your garden, you actually see your plant growing bigger because the environment can either stifle uh, your growth or it can encourage uh, your growth, stifle or strengthen your growth, okay? So environment uh, says this, I accept you. I accept you or I receive you the way you are. I don't need you to be somebody else. I, I see you, you are who you are and you have, for example, come to this school and I want to help you make your, your, a better you. I want to make you a better you, okay? But it's very important for youth ministries uh, to thrive and to succeed when uh, we uh, can say to our young people, sometimes not with words, but just with action, I accept you. Okay, now let's uh, put it to the students again here. Uh, in what way uh, have you felt this in the environment that you are growing in, whether it be Victory Academy or your own church or your own youth groups? Uh, you feel, first of all, do you think this is important? that the adults say, I accept you. Uh, and if you think it's important, why do you think it's important? And what, in what way have you experienced the I, set, I accept you, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, vibe, the vibe, okay? Um, uh, who, who, else would like to, who else would like to uh, take it on? Emma, would you like to try? <laughs> okay, the environment. Uh, you know that uh, Emma, uh, some of you know it, uh, has been in X Church since she was a baby. <laughs> All right, because her parents uh, were part of X Church for a long time. Uh, and then she's grown up, and I think uh, she's grown up uh, really well. Uh, and uh, not only beautiful on the outside, but beautiful on the inside. Uh, and I'm putting her on the spot, right, uh, in this uh, live show. Uh, Emma, could you stand? And uh, first of all, is this phrase, I accept you? important in reaching young people? Okay, I personally think yes, it is important for Why? many teens. Uh, I guess if you hear an adult say, like I say for you, if you come to a teen, like a new teen, not say those who've already been in church and you go like, oh, I accept you or you show that you care, I guess it's very welcoming. It's heartwarming to the person because it's like, oh, it's a stranger or an adult that I've never met before mm. and yet they're willing to come up and say hi first or to engage in conversation. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So, uh, thank you for that. That's, that's, that's very good. Uh, in what ways have you uh, received that vibe of I accept you? Uh, I, I guess you're still in Victory Academy, so it can't be bad. Uh, even if you want to talk about school, uh, I, I'm, I'm trusting that the teachers here have shown that they accept you. Uh, or is it could be church. So, just give me or give us an example or two about how does I accept you look like uh, to a young person? If the, if the, adults not, uh, the adult is not saying it, how does it look like to you in terms of action? Does it have to be in school? No, it can be anywhere that you feel uh, belonged. Uh, I think like for ex-teens, we have small groups yeah. and each church plan has their own small group leader. Okay. And I think for Subang 1030, there like the small group leader team, like the people who are there, the adults, uh, they always like pinjama us lunch or they buy yeah. food for us or they plan our things to go different places to hang out. Mm. So I think that's another way to show in terms of action instead of just like saying. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Emma. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Uh, that's very good. Um, so I, I think it's care uh, uh, seen in action. 
uh, your name is on their list, right? Because if they bought food for you, then they must have got, uh, hold on, uh, it's, uh, for example, uh, uh, Marcus, <laughs> Asher, Sarah, and who else uh, should we buy food for, uh, right? Emma, right? So, so just being on the list, just being on their finger <laughs> uh, is, I accept you. Uh, I, I, I counted you in. Uh, yeah, I didn't just go out there and go like, oh, just, let's just buy something extra and maybe there's a young person there who needs it. No. Uh, when your leaders here plan, they actually have your name in their hands, uh, in their fingers. Ah, hey, don't forget Marcus. I, I know that. Uh, and, 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 and I think that's one of the best. I accept you. You are part of us uh, and uh, we love you. Fantastic. Okay, thank you, Emma. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, I'm telling the leaders out there, I'm telling uh, the pastors out there, encouragement. Uh, just heaps and heaps and heaps of encouragement. Just keep encouraging your young people. And uh, the side uh, words there is, I believe in you. Very, very important for adult leaders to tell, if not show their young people, I believe in you. Uh, and there are many times where uh, youth ministries don't understand this. Uh, and uh, they might have the, yeah, hello, how are you? You know, they, they might have the example that I see you. They might have the environment, uh, you know, uh, okay, I'll feed you lunch and all that. But they don't venture into this third phase, which is really, really important, I believe, in reaching young people, is that young people want somebody to believe in them. Uh, because many times in our lives, uh, we are people that people might say, uh, they, are, they should be seen, not heard. Uh, yeah, young people are around, but you know, uh, and sometimes also we feel it when we go for uh, big family dinners. Uh, and this is the adult table, uh, three adult tables, and uh, let's start a young people's table there. And not that the, young, the older ones hate you, but because they go like, okay, uh, we will order a certain food for you. I think all of you like fried food only. Uh, uh, you don't like steamed fish. Uh, 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 you like uh, uh, know all the uh, uh, all the unhealthy stuff will be on the young person's table. Uh, but sometimes if we are not careful. Uh, the intention might be good, but we come from a place whereby yeah, just leave them aside. Uh, let them do the small things. Uh, when young people come to this church, uh, what can they do? Ah, uh? uh, let just let them uh, put the chairs. Uh, don't ever give them the microphone because microphone is for adults, you know. Uh, don't ever let them uh, give a five-minute preaching because that's for adults. Uh, but uh, we need to tell young people that we believe in them because there's too much out there that's saying that I, I don't believe in you uh, and uh, I, I therefore don't see you and I, I don't want to give you any opportunity uh, to rise. Okay, so let's now talk about this encouragement. Have you received encouragement? Have you received uh, I believe in you from an adult, uh, even from your teachers? Uh, and is that important? And why is that important? Okay, so uh, now open again to the students here. If you ever want to be good at youth ministry, you must have this. You must have a lot of encouragement for your young people and you must continue to tell them I believe in you. Do you agree with this and why? Who will, go, uh, who will answer this? So far, I think I've done uh, people on my right. Okay, go ahead. Stand up and tell us. Um, Do you believe that I believe in you is important for a young person? It is very important because it also shows that they, you trust them more than just you're there, so I have to be there. But it also shows trust and encouragement is very important because it can get you a long way. Yeah. Uh, must you be perfect for someone to believe in you? I find encouragement is most useful when especially when you need to improve on something. So not only when you're perfect, yeah. but to find when someone's actually there for you and believes in you, even when you're not perfect. That's so good. Actually, thank you very much. You may be seated. Uh, actually, if you think about it, encouragement is most important when people are down, right? Uh, and so when young people come to us down and imperfect, that's when they need encouragement. It's not when they are up and... They are high and they are happy and they are president of this club and vice president of that club. Uh, they, those need encouragement too, but I think encouragement is best for those who don't believe in themselves because uh, maybe your parents never showed you uh, 
what you feel you needed to receive from your parents. Maybe they were too busy. Maybe they didn't understand that that was important for you. Uh, maybe it's your older brother, older sister. Maybe it's someone, someone that uh, at a time when you needed encouragement to be lifted up. Because I think at the end of the day, uh, young people, uh, to believe in yourself is very powerful. Uh, and many young people don't believe in themselves. And uh, it takes an adult to come around you to say, I believe in you. But actually what we want to say to you is not just I believe in you, I believe in you, therefore you must believe in yourself. Uh, and when young people start to have uh, a lack of faith in themselves, a lack of belief, a lack of confidence, that's, why, that's when we start to start failing in life. Uh, we fail in our exams, we fail in being a good friend, we fail in sports because confidence is really important in life. Uh, and we need to have confidence. Of course, we can have confidence in God. Uh, but God also wants us to kind of have confidence in ourselves. And uh, that takes believing in yourself. Uh, so I don't know who I'm talking to uh, this uh, morning, but maybe I'm talking to somebody here who was, who's seated here who actually have a very low self-image of yourself, low self-esteem, and, and, and you never quite, uh, you're not, not able to break out of that, break through from that. So let me just uh, encourage somebody, somebody here. God believes in you. He does. Jesus believes in you. I believe in you. Your teachers here believe in you. Uh, and I, I think it's time that you believe in yourself uh, and say that with God all things are possible and do well. Finally, as I draw this uh, last, uh, well, as I draw uh, this last point <laughs> to a close of this uh, second segment of episode 19, the fourth and final point is empowerment. And someone, someone already said it. I trust you. That's the words uh, that come with empowerment. I trust in you. So can somebody here uh, tell us why I trust in you is important? Is it important in the first place? Why is it important? And uh, give me or give us some examples of what I trust in you looks like. Uh, and uh, we will draw uh, segment two to a close. Okay, so we've got uh, at least three people now answering. Is there one more that wants to try uh, point number four, empowerment. I'm telling the adults that this is very important in youth ministry. If you really want to reach young people, you've got to learn to empower them. It means a lot to them. But why? Because it says, I trust you. How, who, who would like to uh, tackle this? Uh, oh, Asher? Okay. Asher, stand up and uh, tell us. Uh, hi. Oh, that's loud. Okay. Uh, so, I feel like between like uh, humans, trust is something that's really important, even in like the uh, in the teens. And when you're doing something, that trust between when you're working with other people, especially uh, in when teens are doing something that we aren't like really pro at, something that we know very well, that trust can lead us to uh, way higher places. Right. So like uh, let's say in Let's say in like in the ministry we are serving, and uh, let's say we're just on like the sound team, and like I'll be just there. For example, I'll be like, "What are all these right. uh, things that I need to push around?" Yeah. And so uh, the trust in here, uh, not only is the knowledge needed, but when your leader trusts you, you're like, "I can do this. Mm. I can really do this." Mm. That's good. Asher, thank you so much. That's very very good. Uh, there are a few things Asher uh, said there that I just want to highlight before I close uh, segment two. And um, he said uh, that it helps lift the teenager up to another level. And that's what empowerment does. A actually, empowerment says that uh, you can do what I'm doing. That's what you're trying to say to the young person. You can do what I'm doing. I I'm preaching, you can preach too. Uh, I'm doing sound, you can do sound too. So when you empower the young person had, uh, let's say, skill A. Uh, and when you empower, you give him or her a chance to go to skill B and skill C. But they will never rise to skill B and C and D and E and you know, up the ladder if no one is going to give them a chance. Uh, and that's why in the world it's tough because, you know when you go and get a good job, <laughs> you go to an interview and the interviewer said, you have no experience. So I can't hire you and you go like, but I need, I need to get a job first to get experience. And you go like, no, no, no. You need to get experience to get this job. And you go like, what in the world? 
how do I get experience if, if nobody is going to give me a chance? You need to give me a chance. Uh, uh, well, did you answer chance? A uh, uh, chance. So this is very important. In, in school, I think that's what Victory Academy wants to do more and more, to give young people here a chance uh, so they can get better at leadership and whatever they are doing. Second thing, Asher, I, not, I noticed you said sound, uh, which is good because when you stand in front of that sound system, of course with Alex uh, Martin next to you or whoever else that uh, he has put uh, to train you, uh, I like this uh, and, I, and, and, and for the fact that Asher brought it up because you're standing in front of a sound system that costs, how much Alex? Okay, it's 30,000 ringgit. Okay, so uh, this is the thing, this is the thing uh, I find that adults often say they trust young people but trust actually goes with how much it costs. Because if I trusted you with something, if it's easily breakable, and if it's costly, and if you break it and I have to come up with 30,000 ringgit to fix it or to buy a new one, the, the, the trust is not just with words, but it's with action because you're saying that I am handling something breakable. If someone passes you a baby, like a five-day-old baby, and you go like, you know, Asher, you can do it, and Asher is shivering. Because Asher knows that if he drops his baby, right, not only the baby dies, he, he, he's, he might be the next one. Uh, but I think in many ministries, and now let me talk to the camera, let me talk to all the adults listening to this, sometimes we give young people plastic toys because they go like, mm, if they break it, then it's okay. But the level of trust when you give a person a plastic, unbreakable thing is to tell him, I think you're going to break it anyway, so, but you know, I can't really trust you with the real thing. And that's why young people join gangs. Uh, we don't understand it. I've been in this for 35 years, so I understand that gangs do very well because gangs, when a young person joins them at 12, 13, 14, they give a young person a knife. And that's very real. It's not a plastic knife. And they say, okay, go stab somebody, you know. And, and the young person goes like, oh, first of all, the young person will probably be shivering, huh? You want me to stab somebody? Uh, uh, and uh, no, you know, I, I don't want to stab. I don't want to hurt anybody. But by, by being given a knife that can do harm, tells the young person that this gang leader trusts me. And then later on, it'll be a gun. And later on, it'll be drugs. And later on, it'll be a lot of money. And later on, so the reason why a lot of young people are attracted to gangs, uh, leaders that you're listening to me now, uh, is because their leader, and of course this is a bad example, but their gang leader always gives them something real to deal with. Something that can hurt somebody, can break if they... So in church, we are very, very safe with our young people. Sometimes too safe. Uh, let them just arrange the chairs because what, what, what can they do, right? They can't break the chairs. Uh, and, and, and we won't give them five-minute preaching because five-minute preaching can hurt somebody if, it's, if they preach wrong. But when you start giving young people a chance to handle breakable things and handle things that, wow, my word, you know, my leader must trust me a lot with this. 30,000 ringgit sound system. How if, I, how if I poured coffee? That's why you're not supposed to drink coffee or anything uh, near a sound uh, system. Uh, but, you know, how if I suddenly, you know, uh, vomit on it, you know, because I'm so nervous. <laughs> you know, I vomit onto the, 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 the sound console and, you know, oh, it's gone. It can't be fixed. Uh, 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 how, how if, right? And your leader puts a hand around you and goes, it's okay. You know, I, I love you more than I love this sound system and I believe in you more than I believe in this sound system. And if the sound system has to go, it has to go, but at least you learn something. And I think that's the four points I would like to share with all of you leaders out there. Thank you uh, for giving me a chance to share it. I pray that all your youth ministries will do well. Example, environment. What's the third one? encouragement and empowerment. If you can just ask God for wisdom to, to, to do this well, I believe your youth ministry will rise to another level and your young people will believe in themselves but even in God, more importantly, and they will believe that God made them for a time as this, God made them to be special, that they can do something great and uh, so it's going to be awesome. Uh, this is the end of segment two and uh, we'll take a short break before we come back to segment three which is our final segment for the day. God bless you.
Okay, uh, hello and welcome back uh, to episode 19. This is the Chin Up Show and we are on our final segment, segment 3. Uh, for those who, of you who missed segment 2, uh, I want to say that uh, we are recording live from Victory Academy. Victory Academy, let me hear you. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, the best uh, Christian-based school in Malaysia. Wow. Uh, and uh, I'm so glad to be able to do our very first recording, our first very, uh, very first live recording uh, in a school uh, premises uh, here at Victory Academy. I am so glad. Thank you to all the teachers uh, for accommodating us uh, today and to my team. Uh, thank you. Uh, for, uh, you know, just accommodating my whims and fancies. I was invited uh, by the school to do chapel today. Today is Wednesday, uh, and Wednesday morning we have assembly, we have chapel, and uh, throughout the day we have clubs, we have creative arts. So I was called to uh, do chapel and to do the topic purpose, which I'm excited to do, and I will have some slides up. Uh, but I thought to myself, why don't we do a recording, a live recording here at Victory Academy, and for segment two, I did four points uh, to help adults uh, to um, reach young people effectively. Okay, but here at segment three, I'm going to be doing some teaching uh, and uh, I will pause here and there and ask for the response from these amazing uh, students uh, at the secondary school level at Victory Academy. So, uh, the, the topic's on purpose and let's begin. Okay, uh, I've got a few points for you about purpose. Uh, point number one, point number one, and this I've been telling uh, the adults even as I've been doing the last uh, four episodes on youth ministry, uh, Jesus knew his purpose even when he was still young. Do you want to take a guess how young Jesus was when he knew his purpose? Twelve. Good. Because in Luke chapter 2, that's what it says. It said that uh, Jesus went with his parents to Jerusalem for an event uh, and Jesus was sort of, quote-unquote, stuck at the temple because he was so into uh, learning from the elders and learning from the Bible teachers. And he was uh, asking them questions and also giving them answers. And the leaders were very, very, uh, very, very amazed at this young man called Jesus. And he was 12. You're right. He was 12. Uh, and remember the scripture. The scripture says this in Luke 2, 48 to 49. Scripture is on as well. Uh, so when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Why? Because for three days, uh, mom and dad was looking for Jesus. Now, if it was today, I think your parents would have already called the police uh, and uh, reported a missing uh, son or a missing daughter. But in those days, you know, uh, I think they didn't report to the police until much later, uh, if at all there was such a thing. Uh, but they you know, took their relatives and all the people that would help them. And for three days, they were looking for Jesus. And uh, the mother said, look, your father and I, Mary said this, look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. There was an anxiousness, right? Because the longer it took to find Jesus, the more probably their mind was thinking, is he kidnapped? Is he dead? Is he uh, hurt? Uh, did he fall down into a ravine? Uh, did an animal, a wild animal uh, hurt him? So the longer you take to find a lost person, the more your mind will go into overtime. Oh my word, what's happening? Is she alright? Is he okay? So uh, the parents of Jesus sought him anxiously. But Jesus said to them, why did you seek me? Or rather, it should be read, why were you so anxious? Why were you so worried? Okay, and parents do get worried. Uh, it's very natural. But Jesus went on to say, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? So at 12 years old, you're right to say that Jesus already knew his purpose. Uh, so let me just look at you right now. Uh, how many of you here in this room can clearly say that you know your purpose? Let me see your hand. Okay. So I think that's why we have to speak about purpose. Right? Because I think even though some of you might think you know, you're not that clear. But purpose is really important. So I'm so glad that we're doing this. And I, I'm not the one who started it. I think uh, it was you, uh, or, or was it Pastor Dan? Was it you last week? Uh, who uh, Pastor Daniel is here, by the way. Uh, everybody, uh, he's our teens pastor uh, for Acts uh, Church. Uh, and uh, he started the topic on purpose. And he came up to me and said, Pastor, you're on next week. Uh, and uh, would you like to continue uh, purpose? Now that I didn't see any hands go up, 
of people who know their purpose at this age. Uh, and I think most of them are older than 12. So they're older than Jesus was at 12. Uh, and so uh, it's a good topic, therefore. Okay, good topic. And to those of you watching me, you could be young. Uh, you could be from uh, Penang watching me. You could be from Johor Bahru watching me. You could be from uh, East Malaysia watching me or from another country. Uh, I know there are a lot of teenagers in Africa uh, who may be watching this. Uh, you could also be like the young people here. You, don't, you yourself haven't put up your hand because you go like, yeah, pastor, I, I also don't know my purpose. Okay, well, well, first of all, Jesus knew it and he knew it at 12. Uh, so it's possible to know it at young age. Okay, let's look at point number two. Point number two says, while young people can be clear of their purpose, that purpose can become even clearer and cover more areas with time. So this is important to note, that even if you are clear with your purpose today, you go like, yeah, I think God has given me life uh, to one day uh, give back to other young people. I think that one day I will be like a youth pastor or a youth worker or a youth counsellor. I think one day I might be a teacher and I will help other young people. Maybe at this age, you're thinking, yeah, I want to be a teacher, I want to help other young people. Maybe you go like, I think I know my purpose. Mm. But even if, I know that most of you don't know your purpose yet, so clear, but even if you are clear, uh, please take note that that purpose can become even clearer as you grow older and as you find out more. Uh, and it will cover even more areas. Uh, you go like, yeah, I once upon a time thought I would be a teacher, but now I think I will not just be a teacher. One day I will actually start a school. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, it, will, it, it will be wider in the scope. Okay, so um, that's point number two. All right. Uh, point number three, other words for purpose are, other words for purpose are meaning. Okay, so has anybody ever asked you before, what do you think your meaning is? What's the meaning of your life? How many of you have ever asked that question? What's the meaning of my life? Okay, good. Uh, and what do you mean by that? <laughs> give give, give uh, my brother here a microphone. Yeah. Tell us your name and uh, stand oh. up and, and say, <coughs> say, say to us, okay, you've, you've asked yourself that question before, right? Yeah. What do you think I, that question I thought, means? I thought others would raise up their hand too, but uh, I guess, oh, okay. it's, just, I guess yeah, it's just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. You did well. Okay, so what's the question? So, uh, you, 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 you have asked yourself, uh, what's the meaning of life, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean when you ask that question? Like, what is, what, when I, what am I was here born, for? when I was born, like, okay. what is the point of me being born, you know? That's good. Which is another way to say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, like, it's another way to yeah, say it's purpose. another way to say purpose, yeah. Yeah, another way to say purpose is what's the point yeah. of my, me being born? Or what's the point of my life? Another way to say it, thank you so much, you can sit, uh, sit down. Another, another way to say it is, uh, what is my life for? That's another way to say it. What, I'm, what, what am I here for? Have you heard it said that way? Uh, and I think quite a few young people have asked that. In fact, uh, even adults still ask it. What am I here for? I mean, especially adults have been working nine to five and day after day after day after day with no real meaning or satisfaction or fulfillment. Uh, after 10 years, they'll say, Actually, what am I here for? Just to make money and pay my bills? You know? Uh, it's a very important question. Uh, another word is mission. What is your mission? Have you asked yourself that before? Anyone here in this room? What's my mission? Uh, what, is, what is the purpose of my life? Okay? Uh, how about calling? Uh, anyone here ever thought about calling? And what is it uh, about? What do you think calling is about? What is my calling in life? Would it be the same as what's my mission in life? Yeah? Would it be the same as what's my purpose in life? Uh, I, I don't want you to get it all mixed up and messed up because sometimes it, it's just the same thing said in many ways. Uh, and also, the last word I put there is assignment. Now, how many of you know what assignment is? Because you get it every week. Do you get assignments in school? Okay. Uh, and if you haven't caught the assignment... Would you be able to do it? Okay. Um, someone showed me uh, some photos of some of you doing very well with the fashion design uh, drawing. Uh, how many of you did that? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, some of you really look like you are... Yes, yes. Jaden, I know. I saw, I saw your picture especially. Uh, and some of you look like you, you were born for this. Oh, 
I'm not sure whether your parents will agree. Huh? My son <laughs> becoming fashion designer. Uh, but you, you did so well. You did so well. Uh, so, but if you didn't understand the assignment, uh, you would have not have done it well. So, I, I've watched some uh, Instagram posting and I've watched some TikTok posting uh, where the, uh, the title there was they understood the assignment. Have you seen that? Uh, because they seem to know what to do. They seem to know what the other person is asking for. My question is, do you know what God is asking for you or from you? Do you understand the assignment of your life? Because if you don't, then every morning when you wake up, you don't really know what life is about and you, don't, and you won't know how to do the job and finish the work and by the time you end up at night, you go like, the assignment for today is finished. I mean, homework is also like that, right? You know when you finish your homework. But every life, everyone in this room has an assignment. And I want you to understand your assignment. Uh, it's important to understand it so that you can fulfill it. Alright? Uh, I like Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. And this is what Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 says. I therefore, this is the Apostle Paul writing, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Let me break it down for you. Let me break down this scripture for you. First of all, Paul the Apostle asked the believers to walk worthy of the calling. So the word calling is there. The word calling is biblical. The word calling is of God. God believes in calling. He gives us all calling. And so, Paul the Apostle is asking all of us to walk worthy of the calling. Now, the, the word walk worthy in the original Greek, so the Bible you know in the New Testament, New Testament was writ written in the Greek language. The Old Testament was written in the Hebrew language. So if you want to do a Bible study, when you look into the Old Testament and you want uh, the original meaning of a word, go back in, in the Old Testament, go back to the Hebrew language, Learn the Hebrew language and go like, okay, this is what it means in Hebrew. So I get a better understanding of what it really means. In the Greek, which the New Testament is written in, the, word, the words walk worthy is balancing the scales. You can write that down. What does walk worthy mean in the Greek? Balancing the scales. Have you ever seen a, a scale? How in the market or wherever they balance it? Okay, they, they will put a, a, a scale, a, a weight on one side of the scale and they'll put uh, vegetables or food or whatever on the other side, and it's supposed to balance. And once it balances, then they know how heavy uh, that vegetable is or how, how heavy that meat is because the weight on the other side will tell you, okay, it's two kilograms. And so once you put uh, things on the left-hand side, for example, uh, and it starts to balance, once it balances, then you know because you put a two-kilogram weight or a one-kilogram weight on the right-hand side, and because it balances, then this, whatever it is that you're trying to balance, uh, will show that this also is two kilograms or one kilogram or whatever the weight is. And God is also into balance. The Bible speaks about balance. And the Lord wants our lives to be lived at a balance. That means it cannot be too much play and not enough study. It cannot be too much study and not enough play. There cannot be too much uh, just uh, classes in the classroom and not enough clubs and chapel. Life is about balance. And God is about balance. And God tells us about balance. And here, Paul is saying, walk worthy. So if you really want to walk worthy of your calling, you must balance your calling or your life with your calling. So for example, uh, me, okay? Uh, when I was a sportsman in my school, uh, I was one of the top runners in my school. So I ran the 400 meters uh, and I, I, I was a champion in my school for 400 meters. Uh, champion for 4 four by 400 meters and I, I also won the 4 by 100 meters. I was, I was a sprinter but not the best. Uh, I was a long distance sprinter uh, so that you need stamina. Uh, and I felt like it was my calling at least that time when I was 16, 17. I started at 15 uh, and I became the top runner in my school and I thought it was my calling. It was my assignment. It was my purpose uh, to be a good, good athlete. Uh, for myself and for, I got a lot of medals in the, in the house. Uh, uh, but it was not just individual medals that I was for, I won for my team. I was part of a team called Blue Team. 
And blue team uh, uh, sort of is always either number one or number two, number one, number two. It is people like us, uh, those days we are good at sports, that raise up the team because we give the team a lot of points. Uh, so I thought it was my calling to be really good at what I did. So the, the people asked me, your father, they said, Kenneth Chin, your father took drugs uh, for 30 years. My, my father was on ganja, marijuana. And he was a father that was uh, most of the time high on drugs. And so he was absent father. Uh, he will hit me and he will hit me with his belt. One time I was, uh, I forgot to close my room door and uh, he, he didn't like it. He, he said, Kenny, calls me Kenny, why, why, why don't you close your room door? I said, Dad, I just went to the toilet just for one minute. Uh, I, I was going to come back in my room. He says, no, I told you before, you always close your door whenever you go out. So he took out his belt and he slashed me uh, and whipped me for about 12 to 13 times uh, just across the body I think one or two hit my face. Uh, and I just stood there at about, I think I was about maybe 13, 14 years old. I just stood there to let him hit me because he has hit me for, uh, you know, as long as I've known. Uh, he hit me when I was four, six, seven. You know, uh, he, every time he doesn't take drugs, uh, he would be very violent. And then he would go and take his drugs and then he'd be high and then he'd be all fine. And then he'd say, hey, Kenny, why are you crying? He forgot that he hit me. So I, I, I was living my life like that uh, with an abusive father, a father on drugs, uh, addicted to drugs. But by the grace of God, I was able to forgive him because Jesus put forgiveness in my heart to forgive him. And my dad died uh, practically in my arms. Uh, he died from stroke. He died from a heart attack. He stayed in my house because God said, I want you to take care of him. Actually, I, I hated my dad so much. Uh, but the Lord says, no, you must love those. Uh, your, the Bible says, love your enemies. Uh, and uh, so I, I was able to love him and I brought him into my house. Uh, I was really married by then. Uh, I said, you know, forget my dad. I don't, want to, I don't want to stay with him. I don't want him to stay with me. But the Lord uh, said, no, take care of him even when he's sick. So I brought him in. What I'm trying to say is that uh, I had a very, very bad background, very sad background, a very abusive background. But I never touched drugs, not once. I tried to smoke once, one, one cigarette to try. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I hid from my father. I, I smoked under my bed. So funny, you know. I remember it so clearly. I put a cigarette in my mouth, I, I lit it, and then I smoked, and then I coughed like crazy. Uh, not only that, I, I was able to blow the smoke up, right? But the smoke hit the top of uh, the bottom of my bed and came back into my face. Uh, and, uh, you know, I never tried it again. But you know what really helped me? Uh, it was sports. I knew that I had to be number one uh, for myself and for my team. Uh, uh, I, I was champion of 400 meters uh, for three years in a row. And because I felt that was my calling, I balanced that up with my lifestyle. I cannot smoke because I want to run well. I cannot take drugs because I want to be a champion. I, so my calling, if you understand what I'm trying to say, balance up my life. And if you know your calling, your calling can also balance up your life. Should I do this? Should I sleep so late if I really want to do well in school? Should I actually be with my friends like this if I really want to do well? Uh, and so on and so forth. Now, today I'm a pastor. And, uh, uh, and you, you know, some of you know what I do here. Uh, and, you know, I, I need to, I, I actually want to sometimes be a little bit naughty. I do. I, want, I, I must confess to you. Uh, I am 53, uh, going on 54 this year. Uh, and uh, sometimes I feel like, mm, there's a naughty side in me that comes out, you know? The, the bad boy in me and, 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 and uh, I want to uh, disturb my wife a little bit, no? Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I go like, you know, hey, not only am I, am I 54, but I'm also a pastor of 50 churches around the world. Uh, and I, when I lay hands on people, uh, you know, I expect them to be healed. Uh, and I pray for people on Tuesday in the, th the hour of prayer and they come to me with cancer uh, prayers. And I go like, oh, I don't think I can afford to be naughty lah, because I want to be used by God. I want to be able to pray for a cancer patient and see them healed. So, that very vision, that very mission, that very assignment of being able to pray for a cancer patient and to see them healed stops me from being sinful. Stops me from being naughty. Stops me from being crazy because I want God to answer my prayer. So I say, okay, Lord. Argh. Do you know I don't watch any movies that use the name Jesus? Uh, so every time they say, Jesus, you know, in a movie, I turn it off. And I tell you, it's terrible because I can be watching a movie on the plane, uh, uh, going to America, going to London, and uh, sometimes I, don't, I can't sleep very well on planes, so I watch maybe about, about five movies in a row. 
And out of five movies, uh, four will use the name of Jesus. And uh, my wife has also followed me now. She's, she watches one that curses the name of Jesus and she shuts, shuts it off. I don't know why people like to use the name Jesus. They don't use Buddha. They don't use Muhammad. Uh, they just go after the name of Jesus. I tell you why. Because the name of Jesus is powerful. So the devil wants to bring it down. You don't hear anyone using any other religion. It's always Jesus. It also tells you something. There's something about the name of Jesus. And so because I pray for so many people to get healed using the name of Jesus, I refuse now to participate in a movie that brings his name down or misuses his name. Uh, and I say, God, the way I treat the name of Jesus with movies is the way I want you to remember when I'm praying for people that I respect the name of Jesus so much that when I use his name, please heal somebody. I balance my life. You say, oh, Pastor Kenneth, don't worry. Like, you can watch. Like, nothing wrong. No, it's wrong for me because I use his name every time I pray for the sick. So you see, my calling is to pray for the sick. My calling is to see people's mom and dad healed from cancer. I really do love people. I love to see people break through from suicide thoughts. I want to lay hand on, my, uh, on a young person and suddenly the young person no longer has suicide thoughts. I, I, I don't know whether God will do it all the time when I pray. I hope so. But I, I at least want to respect the name. So every movie that has the name Jesus uh, used in a bad way, uh, used in a disrespectful way, I chose not to watch it only so that God can remember me every time I pray. I respect that name. I say, in Jesus' name, cancer be gone. You know, I expect cancer to be gone from the person's body. Um, so, do you understand this? This is a very important scripture. We balance the scales, we balance our lives with our calling. So now you know why you need to know your calling? So your life can be balanced. So that you know what to do with your life in your private moments, uh, in your day-to-day -day moments. If you don't have a dream, if you don't have a purpose, and sometimes purpose also is a, the word dream. If you don't have a mission, if you don't have a calling, if you don't have an assignment, you begin to, lose, to live your life very loosely. I, uh, never mind, lah, you know, drink a little bit, smoke a little bit. So what? I don't have a meaning. There's no meaning to my life anyway. There's no meaning to my life. I'm not helping anyone anyway. So just live, lah. live for myself, live selfishly. But when you start to live for others and you live for a mission, you will find that your life will begin to balance. So therefore, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy. Balance your life up. And I like the way uh, Paul said, I am the prisoner of the Lord. And sometimes you and I have to find ourselves as prisoners to something. What does a prisoner mean? You are bound. You, you've got handcuffs. You've got chains around you. I am bound to this life that I refuse to watch, for example, movies that put down the name of Jesus. He said, wow, pastor, sounds like you are bound. Sounds like you are a prisoner. Because when you can't watch a movie that, you know, tells uh, or, or uses the name of Jesus disrespectfully, means you are bound to that. You are a prisoner of that, Kenneth. And I say, yeah. Paul also said, I am a prisoner because I have an assignment. If you don't have an assignment or a purpose in life, you will live like a free man to do anything you want under the sun. But the, the secret of uh, uh, living your calling and your purpose is you must come to a place whereby you accept that you are a prisoner of somebody. And I accept that I am a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody okay? I'm a prisoner of the Bible. The Bible makes me a prisoner and I willingly be a prisoner to the Word of God because I say the Word of God leads me. The Word of God guides my every character, my every personality. I bind myself. I make myself a prisoner to the Word and to the Lord. And so Paul said, I am a prisoner of the Lord. Some people don't like that word because every young person likes to be free. Don't tell me what to do. I am free to do whatever. I, and, and the more you, the older you grow, the more free you want to be. But when you are free like that, it just means that you have no purpose. So let's, let's uh, move on. Point number four. Uh, there is a general purpose and there is a, there is a specific purpose. Okay, take that note down. I want you to know that. Uh, the general will of God, for example, and the specific will of God. How many of you here uh, would like to try to uh, explain this to me? What do you think this means? General purpose, 
and then specific purpose compared to a general will of God and specific will of God. Okay, uh, Sarah, maybe you can try. What do you think this means? So Sarah, just talk to them. What do you think this means? What do you think a, what, what do you think a general purpose is and a specific purpose is? And I put it uh, in bracket, you know, it, it, it is, for example, the general will of God and the specific will of God. What, what do you think it is? Yeah? Okay, yeah? If you, if you stand up and say, I don't know whether I should study as a student. Everybody will go like, uh, generally, duh, everybody should study if you're a student, okay? But what do you think a specific purpose of a student could be? Like, for example, maybe you are a president of a club. And that's specifically for you, not for everybody else, because you cannot have presidents. Every student cannot be a president. Uh, but generally, every student is called to study. So there's a general purpose and there is a specific purpose. You carry on. What are the things that you, can you think about? Pastor, if uh, uh, Sean wants to help. He can. He can help too. Yeah. Wow, Sean wants to help Sarah out. That's good. We are from the same homes, aren't we? Yeah. All right, go, Sean. Uh, a general purpose would be like, something many people can relate to. Yep. So, a general purpose can be like, uh, let's say in a machine, right? Mm. General purpose would be to, let's say, compute things, computer. Mm. But then, the specific purpose would be like, the individual roles each part will play. That's good. So, we can be all focusing on trying to compute something, yeah. but each thing will help to uh, fully complete the course. That's good. Yeah, very good. I, th I think you're going to be an engineer like, one day. Huh? He's got engineering examples. Sarah, I haven't forgotten you. Yeah. Okay. Where do you think the general will of God comes from? How do we know the general will of God? The obedience. Okay. I'll, I'll help you with this. Huh? The general will of God is found out from the Bible. So, if you lift up your Bible, uh, all that is in the Bible is the general will of God. Means it's for all Christians. Right? Sarah, why do you stand up? I still want to see your beautiful face. Okay. Uh, and uh, so that's general. So, so um, the Bible is for everyone, every Christian. Uh, and what do you think a specific will of God could be? When he asks you to try. Follow. Okay, when he asks you to follow him or when he tells you, Sarah, I would like you to, to consider being a worship leader at chapel. Uh, not everybody is called to be a worship leader Oh, this is, good. this is a good one. I, I, just, I just thought about it. Not everybody is called to be a worship leader, but everybody is called to worship. Mm. Would that be a general will? Everybody is called to worship and you are called to be a worship leader. Is that cool? Okay. Uh, think of another one. Anyone else want to help her? General purpose. I, I, I don't want to get over this too quickly because it can help you. It can really help you when you go home and you say, what is the will of God for my life? And if you don't know your, the will of God yet, remember, you might not know the specific will, but you can know the general will. Uh, how many of you know that going to church is the general will of God? Right? Uh, serving in church is the general will. That means everyone should, church, should serve. You cannot say, God didn't tell me to serve. God didn't tell me to go to church. You understand? So the general will of God is very important, general purpose. Okay, Sarah, try. Okay, wow, you got uh, Pastor da Daniel. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'll, I'll let uh, Sarah think about it. Zach, do you have something? No? <laughs> Example of general purpose, specific purpose? Okay, let, let, I, I know your dad, Dr. Daniel Kong, right? What do you think the general purpose of his life is in, in Monash? Okay, I'll tell you. The general purpose of his life in, in Monash is to teach. What's the specific purpose of his life in Monash? Okay, to teach engineering. Okay, so teacher's general rule, general purpose is to teach. But every teacher here has a specific calling, specific purpose. Okay, Sarah. It's like everyone is called to, eh, everyone, is, everyone is called to serve God, right? And um, an example can be like Emma's dad, because uh, um, he... He goes out and like speaks to people. Maybe he's called to um, reach out to people who aren't um, like people might think is like, oh, um, 
you can't really talk to them. Like they probably won't listen. Mm. Like I think. Okay. If I somewhere I forgot when uh, um he shared that he went to the prisoners place yes. and talked to them. Mm. And it's something people think like oh no one will talk to them right. about you know about Christ, but he did, and it's yeah. very good. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah. So we were using uh, uh, Elder Ping Ho uh, as an example. Uh, in my office, there are about 30 over staff uh, and all of them are called to full-time. That's why they're there, called to full-time ministry. Uh, but not all of them are called to do what Elder Ping Ho uh, has been doing, which is community work uh, and go out there even to the down and out uh, and uh, to do specific work among the poor. Uh, yes, as Christians, we should remember the poor. Ah, this is a good one. All Christians must remember the poor. That's what the Bible, Bible says. As Christians, generally all of us must remember the poor. We must be kind to the poor. But not everyone is called to the poor ministry. As in ministering to the poor people as a job, as a full-time call. Okay, now let's watch this video uh, and uh, get something out of it and uh, then I'll move on. This is... Uh, let me set it up very quickly for you. Uh, you will watch, uh, I think, four ladies uh, and they're being interviewed uh, by uh, the uh, sports channel uh, and because they are the number one uh, women softball team in America. Uh, but they are just college students uh, and they're number one, remember, number one uh, college softball team and they are being uh, interviewed by top uh, interviewers and uh, sports uh, channel uh, people uh, and I want you to hear the interview, I want to hear uh, what these uh, young ladies had to say. Alex Scarborough with ESPN, for, for the players, I know you talked about keeping the joy of the game, but I'm curious, it's a long season, right? And you guys have had the target on your back the entire time, the win streak being number one. How do you handle the unique pressure that comes with that? How do you keep the joy for so long when anxiety seems like a thing that could very easily set in. Well, the only way that you can have a joy that doesn't fade away is from the Lord. And any other type of joy is actually happiness that comes from circumstances and outcomes. And um, I think Coach has said this before, but joy from the Lord is really the only thing that can keep you motivated, um, uh, just in a good mindset, uh, no matter the outcomes. Thankfully, we've had a lot of success this year, but if it was the other way around, uh, joy from the Lord is the only thing that can keep you embracing those memories, moments, friendships, and all of that. So uh, I would, that's really the only, the only answer to that because there's no other way that softball can bring you that um, because of how much failure comes in it and just how much of a roller coaster the game can be. 1,000% agree with Grace Lyons. Um, I went through that my freshman year. I I was so happy to win the college. I've talked about this before, but I was just so happy that we won the College World Series, but I didn't feel joy. I didn't have, I didn't know what to do the next day. I didn't know what to do for that following week. I didn't feel filled and I had to find Christ in that. And I think that is what makes our team so strong is that we're not afraid to lose because if it's not the end of the world if we do lose. Yes, obviously we've worked our butts off to be here and we want to win, but it's not the end of the world because our life is in Christ and that's all that matters. Yeah, um, I think a huge thing that we've really just latched onto is eyes up. And you guys see us doing this and pointing up, but we're really like fixing our eyes on Christ. And that's something where like they were saying, you can't find a fulfillment in an outcome, whether it's good or bad. And um, I think that's why we're so steady in what we do and, and our love for each other and our love for the game, because we know this game is giving us the opportunity to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think once we figured that out and that was our purpose and everyone was all in with that, um, it's really changed so much for us. And I mean, I know myself, I, I've seen so much of a growth in myself with um, once I turned to Jesus and I realized how he had changed my outlook on life, not just softball, but understanding how much I have to live for and that's living to exemplify the kingdom. And I think that brings so much freedom. And I'm sure everyone's story is similar, but we all have those great testimonies that have really like shown how awesome it is to play for something bigger. Um, and I think that's just what brings me so much joy. And 
no matter the outcome, whether we get a trophy in the end or not, we're, this isn't our home. And I think that's what's amazing about it is we have so much more. We have an eternity of joy with our Father, and I'm so excited about that. And yes, I live in the moment, but I know this isn't my home. And um, no matter what, my sisters in Christ will be there with me in the end um, when we're with our, our King. So The most beautiful thing is to see a young person really know their purpose. The number one softball team, women's softball team in America, they love the game. They are passionate about what they do, but they say, that's not our purpose. Our purpose of playing the game is to glorify Jesus. So that's all the time we have left, actually. Uh, and uh, although I have got at least another five, six more points for you, maybe we'll do it another time. Victory Academy, Academy, Victory Academy, thank you so much for being part of the Chin Up Show today. I hope to see you again next time. For those of you watching us uh, online, uh, thank you for tuning in uh, this time. Uh, and uh, this is Kenneth Chin signing off from the Chin Up Show. God bless you. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like us. Give us a comment. God bless. Bye.